February 20th, Roseanne McCulley was brutally beaten by her husband. That beating ended her up in the hospital, and when she got out of the hospital, she took to social media to tell people about it. On Facebook, she reported what had happened and the treatment that they did in the hospital. A week later, her husband Bobby McCauley got on Facebook and posted asking people if they were enjoying the show and promising more to come. The more that came was tragic. If you're new here, welcome. My name is April Hardy. On this channel, we talk about all things domestic violence related, including how to survive it and how to thrive after it. This week, we're talking about intimate partner homicide. I'm bringing another intimate partner homicide story to you guys because I really want for you to understand that this is a very real and frequent end to domestic violence relationships when we stay in them. I also want to take the opportunity to honor the victims of every story that I bring because I don't want them to be a blip on the news radar and that's it. There's so much more than that. And unfortunately with this case, I don't have a ton of information. I haven't been able to find it and I can't find Facebook pages to be able to get background. So if you have information about any of these people, I welcome you putting it in the comments. I would love to honor them better than what I am able to. Let's get to their story. In 2017, Roseanne McCulley, who is now 34, filed a domestic violence complaint against Bobby McCulley, now 35. But she decided not to prosecute it, and reportedly there wasn't enough evidence without her cooperation for the state to prosecute it so the case was dropped. That happens frequently for multiple different reasons. Maybe she was afraid. Maybe he sweet-talked her out of it. I don't know how early into their relationship that was, but it was before they got married. And she dropped that case, went ahead and married him, and had a child, a little girl, with him. So I would imagine in this case that it was probably sweet-talking and probably promises and probably being the man that she fell in love with, trying to smooth that stuff over in that case because it seems like it was pretty early on. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Stephanie St. John, a friend of Roseanne's, said that she was increasingly concerned for her friend's safety over the two weeks before she died. Roseanne had posted on her Facebook about being beaten by her husband. She posted, quote, he was able to stomp on my chest and my abdomen, so the bruising and the swelling is really bad there. A week later, Bobby wrote on her Facebook page, Enjoying the show, more to come. Bobby McCauley murdered Roseanne McCauley and two of her kids. On Saturday in Clayton, people met to honor her and her two children. 34-year-old Roseanne McCauley, her 13-year-old son Caden and daughter Kaylee, just six years old, all three murdered by Bobby McCauley. Stephanie said that she spoke to Roseanne at about 6.30 p.m. on Thursday night, but couldn't convince her to take her children and leave to go stay somewhere else. So instead, they did what I would probably do also, and they made an agreement to talk. They were gonna report to each other every two hours. That completely, 100% sounds like something that I would do with my friends. Now why she chose to not leave that night, we can't really know. Maybe she didn't want to expose her kids to a domestic violence shelter and the stuff that can happen there. Maybe she didn't know what options she had. Maybe she was acting out of fear and she felt safe in her home. There could be lots of different options, but she chose to stay and she thought that she was being safe by making this agreement with her friend. Okay, we'll report, we'll check in every two hours. Stephanie told reporters, I called her so many times last night and I didn't get a response back. She said around 10.30 p.m. she finally got a response to one of her texts, but it wasn't worded the way that Roseanne would normally text. So she asked if it was Bobby texting as if it was Roseanne, and she never got an answer. According to police records, multiple calls from the McCauley home were made in the last couple of weeks, one of them for domestic violence. They saw exactly what had been done to her, and they charged it as some uh, misdemeanor, assault three or something, which meant they could only put out a wanted, which means that they weren't actively looking for him. I mean, had he run across them at a traffic stop or something, they might have arrested him. 
but they didn't actively go out to find him. Police say there was another domestic violence complaint from Roseanne McCauley last month. The detectives were actually looking for Bobby McCauley yesterday prior to the shooting. An officer first responded to their home at about 8.30 p.m. that Thursday night, March 4th, after a neighbor had reported a suspicious person walking between houses. Police apparently searched the area and weren't able to find anything. Three hours later, they got another call to that address, but this time it was for shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a window that was shattered and Roseanne and two of her children deceased in the home. Bobby McCauley III shot and killed his wife Roseanne and two of her children, who were not his biological children, Caden Johnson, who was 13, and Kaylee Brooks, who was six. Shot them to death in their home after holding them hostage for several hours first, and that call came in at around 11.30 p.m. On Saturday, in front of the Buzz Westfall Justice Center in Clayton, people gathered to mourn the lives they say were taken too soon. The murders happened just five days after Bobby, as far as I can tell, had filed for divorce from Roseanne. That's not typical. It is very typical for something like this to happen after somebody tries to leave. It is not typical that it's the killer who files for divorce before it happens, but it is entirely possible in this situation that he already knew she was gone. Like she had already made this, this disconnection between the two of them. He knew he had lost her. So he filed for divorce, trying to gain control, like trying to be the one in control in a kind of, you can't leave me if I leave you first type of a thing and then figured out that that wasn't good enough for him. That's very possible. That's what I would guess happened in this situation, but it's just a guess. After the shooting, police say that he took their one-year-old daughter, who was Bobby and Roseanne's, he took her from the home. Reportedly, there was an Amber Alert that was put out for him and her, and she was later found to be okay. It's so heartbreaking because she's only one, and uh, she's not going to remember a lot, but I'm going to make sure that she's deep in the family. His mother, Michelle Clayton, was arrested on Friday morning and she was charged with misleading police in an attempt to protect her son. Bobby apparently dropped their daughter off at a relative's house before he shot himself to death at about 9 a.m. Friday morning. He had already been charged with seven counts of armed criminal action, three counts of first degree kidnapping, one count of burglary, seven counts of armed criminal action, and three counts of first degree murder. When his body was found in his car near his mom's house on Friday morning. Police then found Bobby dead in a car where he took his own life. Bobby had been the police's only suspect in this case. I'm going to read a quote from Catherine Ross, who was Roseanne's youngest sister. She said, My sister was brutally beaten on February 20th, and 12 days later it was announced that she and two of her children were dead. My sister did absolutely everything. She filed a report the same day that she was beaten. She followed up with detectives and officers in charge of the case, but this was not enough to protect her. The last text that Rosie sent my mother and me was updating us that her estranged husband was still not in police custody. She was scared for her life and she had done absolutely everything right. Stephanie St. Johnson said that friends of Roseanne McCauley called her Rosie, like her sister did, and said that she is a very sweet girl, very intelligent. I find that it's really common that victims of intimate partner homicide are described that way. Most of these women are described as sweet and caring a friend to everyone, connects well with everyone, would give you the shirt off their back if you needed it type of people. I find it really sad that we lose so many of those type of people to murders like this. I wish that I had information about Kaden and Kaylee. I'm sure that probably it wasn't reported on because they're children, they're minors, and I get that. But I would love to know about their personalities and their hopes and their dreams. They had them, and they had every right to go after them. I was taken from them by somebody who had absolutely no right. And in this case, like a lot of cases, if there are blended families, when there's an intimate partner homicide, it is common for the murderer to spare children that are their own blood. And it's common for them to lash out at children who are not. Obviously, there are other cases where they just they kill everybody and they will kill their blood. That's not to say that they won't kill their own children. 
but in a blended family situation, the children that are at most risk, like in this case, are the ones that are not their biological children. I'm going to leave you with some words and video of Roseanne's mom, but before I go, if you are concerned for your life, if you're in a domestic violence type of situation, or even if you're not, if you have an ex or you have a partner who hasn't beaten you up, hasn't done domestic violence in the way that the media commonly portrays as domestic violence, but you're concerned about your life, you don't know what it is maybe, but you feel scared of them. First of all, domestic violence is not just beating. Domestic violence is domestic abuse. It's abuse between romantic partners. And that can include physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse, coercive control. It can include a lot of things that the media doesn't tend to portray when they're talking about domestic violence. If you are concerned for your life, please reach out. You can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. I'll put the number on the screen. It's really disheartening because there, even in this case, somebody in the news was well-meaningly telling people that they need to reach out when they're in situations like this. They need to reach out for help. There are resources and they need to take them. We want folks to understand we don't have to suffer in silence. We can get help and we're bringing those resources to the table. Did Roseanne take all of the resources that were available to her? Probably not, but I definitely know how hard it can be to take those resources, first of all. I know how hard it can be to leave your home. I know how hard it can be to consider going into hiding. I know how hard it is, how much somebody is asking of you when you have to think about leaving your job and pulling your kids out of school and taking them somewhere that they don't know. Maybe you have a pet at home and you don't have any idea what you're gonna do with them, or there's so many things that factor in there that people don't think about. I get it, but ultimately, if you are afraid for your life, you need to take action to be safe. Make a safety plan, talk to other people, arm yourself if that's a possibility, and if you're mentally okay to do that, because if you're not, and I don't mean that like you're crazy, but I mean like, that you're not willing to act with a weapon. It's better for you to not have a weapon and have somebody be able to use it against you. That's what I mean by that. But don't do it alone. Please reach out for help to people who are connected and can help. It sucks. It's a sucky situation. But it's better than the alternative. Until I see you again, stay safe. I lost my daughter and my two grandchildren. Um, to something that I, I never imagined would happen. The prosecutor says this is a call to action for everyone. And oftentimes it's family members and friends who see these incidents before they reach our office. And we need people to point people, point their family members or their friends to the types of resources to get them help. Or if it's already crossed that line of violence, Sometimes you got to do the uncomfortable thing, which is report it to law enforcement because, you know, maybe it might strain that relationship, but it might save someone's life too.